What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you all to the Baseball Aficionado podcast, episode number four. Back again with you guys. I'm your host, Santos. Uh, happy to be with you guys. But before we do anything, please, if you're watching on YouTube, please give this video a like, a comment, subscribe, the whole thing. It helps the algorithm. And obviously, if you enjoy baseball-related content, especially Latino related baseball content, please, by all means, uh, appreciate all the support. And, um, and of course, if you're listening, wherever you're listening, please give this a follow on your audio platforms as we are available on all audio platforms, wherever you get your podcasts. So without further ado, of course, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsor and uh, company uh, that I own, which is Santos Threads. Shop santos-threads.com where you get you can get the best in Latino-inspired baseball apparel. We got tees, hats, all kinds of cool things. Go check it out. Uh, we're there, santos-threads.com. Get 15% off your first purchase with promo code aficionado at checkout. And also, don't forget to follow me on social media, the Baseball Aficionado Instagram. Well, as on X or whatever they call it, Twitter, X, whatever the heck it's called now, uh, the BB aficionado. So, and away we go. So, episode four, I want to talk about a few different things. So, I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. Obviously, anybody watching me on YouTube uh, can see I'm wearing a New York Mets jersey, of course, and I'm wearing Carlos Beltran. His baseball jersey, uh, Carlos Beltran, is my all-time favorite Met for a number of reasons. And so on this episode, I am going to talk about the 2006 Mets. Which, the reason I want to discuss this team is because, it, it yes, they, they fell sh short of expectation, obviously. But the 2006 Mets team was a team that left um, fingerprints all over baseball, and it, it left a mark. And for the reason, the reason being, it was probably one of the most Latino baseball teams you will ever see in the history of mankind. And yes, while for Met fans, it was a very painful experience, very painful to lose in the NLCS in that fashion to the St. Louis Cardinals, Yadiel Molina with the home run. We had no idea who he was at the time, and that was his coming out party, right? So. But with all that being said, it was a great Latino baseball team. It's a shame they couldn't finish the job as far as uh, winning a World Series. But I think had they survived that NLCS, I feel like they had an absolute great chance at winning the whole thing. They probably should have. So I just want to talk about that team. I want to remember that team and just get into a couple details because I also want to fix the narrative that I want to address the narrative that Carlos Beltran was the reason that they lost, that the New York Mets lost that game seven, because there's a lot of things that played that came into play when it came to that game seven. And it, it pisses me off to this day that so many people still want to point the finger at Carlos Beltran. Obviously, listeners out there, just to refresh your memory, Carlos Beltran made the last out in the NLCS for the New York Mets back in 2006 in that postseason. Carlos Beltran, unfortunately, struck out in a wicked, wicked curveball by Adam Wainwright, who at the time, we didn't know what he was going to turn into. So Adam Wainwright threw the pitch. It was nasty. Carlos Beltran did not swing the bat, and he struck out looking, and that was the end of the game. And so people kind of scapegoated Carlos Beltran at that, in that point, uh, in that moment. And I'm kind of like, wait, 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 wait. You guys are losing the context of everything. I'm like, you can't blame Carlos for that, for that whole loss where you had guys up and down the lineup who weren't hitting. So I'm going to get to that part a little in a little bit, but I first want to just touch base on some of the overview and the overview of some of the things. I mean, when you look at that 2006 Mets team, and I remember being a New York fan here, a New York Mets fan here in, in New York, I can recall, and I'm going to use this time to call out a couple people because they probably won't remember me, but I remember you. And I'm going to say this because I used to battle with a lot of Mets fans. It's a shame when you got to battle 
uh, fans from your own fan base, right? Who root for the same team as you. But the truth of the matter is, unfortunately, most fan bases are not united anyway. It's just what it is. We always have, you know, we're individuals. Uh, a lot of us have different ideologies. So I try to take a pragmatic approach at the same time. I can be emotional because as a fan, you become invested. You become emotionally invested. And so just I know for, for myself, being a Latino, myself, uh, being a Puerto Rican, the New York Mets team, especially from 2006, that team really marked me, you know, just to set the tone here, um, I want to call out those fans from that time period because I remember at that time when right after um, Beltran or, or even during the 2006 season, right? 2006, 2007, those seasons, that little era of uh, Mets baseball, I could recall battling with fans, fighting with fans who were non-Latino fans, mostly Caucasian fans, and they were they would complain saying that they, there were too many Latinos on this team. I remember. Um, now, I don't know what they were trying to say with that. I don't know what their intents were, their intentions were. I don't know what the what kind of point they were making. I don't know if they felt like because there were too many Latinos on one team, they felt like maybe, you know, it wasn't good for clubhouse chemistry, whatever they may, might have thought. But. It, it was all BS. It was a bunch of crap because that's not the reason why they lost. You know, there were a lot of reasons why the 2006 match didn't go all the way. And I can assure you, one of the reasons was not because there were too many Latinos in the clubhouse. It's false. So there were fans. There were Caucasian Mets fans who I always would fight with who would claim that there were too many Latinos on one team. Oh, this Los Mets team. Los Mets. Oh. Los Mets, you have too many Hispanics on one team. There's too many Hispanics. Too many Hispanics, Los Mets. Oh, how many more Spanish guys you're going to get? It was it was so bad. It was to the point where they thought even the, which there were coaches who were Latino too. It was it was so bad. They even thought Jerry Manuel was Hispanic. Was Hispanic. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Manuel, one of the <laughs> bench coaches is like, no, he's African-American. But yeah, right? So they, they tried, they thought everybody was Latino. So and they try to use that as a scapegoat for for you know whatever that because of to make that the scapegoat along with Carlos Beltran as far as why the Mets didn't win. So you look at that team, the general my the general manager Omar Minaya pulled off and you know made a couple acquisitions, pulled off a great trade trading Mike Jacobs and and a bag of uh, balls and peanuts. Whoa, whoa, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Uh, trading a, a box of Cracker Jack to the Marlins for Carlos Delgado. And that move really helped solidify the New York Mets because when, you, when they brought in Carlos Delgado, which, by the way, G G GM Omar Minaya was one of the few Latino general managers ever, like executives at that time. So that was a big deal. Omar Minaya, Dominicano, él estaba ahí. So that was a big deal in itself. So he he that was that was a big deal towards progress as well. And obviously he traded for the great slugger, the all-time Puerto Rican home run king, Carlos Delgado, uh, which was a game changer because then they were able to pair the two Carloses together, three and four in the lineup, and it was a great three-four punch. I made the argument at that time period, there was no other three-four in baseball better than Carlos Delgado and Carlos Beltran besides Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz. You had David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez, and then after them, it was Beltran and Delgado were the best 3-4 in baseball that season, without a shadow of a doubt. So it was a great time. So you had G the GM, Omar Minaya, right? Omar Minaya. And then listen to all these Latino players they had, because I know... You know, they forget the Minaya, right? Which who was the GM, one of the architects of this team. Even his assistant was was Puerto Rican, was Puerto Rican. Uh, Tony Bernasar, who has history in baseball as well. Tony Bernasar was his partner, was Puerto Rican. I met him personally in real life. Um, so that's that's even the you know, even in those positions, they had Latinos in prominent roles in front office, which was rare. 
um, in that time. It's more common now, little by little, but at that time, it was not as common. So you had that. You had, so listen to this. So obviously, they acquired Carlos Delgado. They had, they signed Julio Franco. Listen to this blast from the past. They had Julio Franco. They had Roberto Hernandez. Pedro Feliciano. Remember, left-handed specialist had a great season that year. They even signed El Orlando El Duque Hernandez, who was key for them in that season. Obviously, wouldn't get to do his thing in the postseason, but Orlando El Duque Hernandez was huge. Ramon Castro, backup catcher from Puerto Rico. Um, obviously, Carlos Beltran. Uh, El Mexicano, Oliver Perez. Otro Cubano, o Olay Sol Soler. Olay Soler, who was there, or some people might know him, Olay Soler, was there. Um, Guillermo Molta, Dominican reliever. Duane Sanchez was the closer, got hurt in a taxi accident. So now you're seeing, I'm planting the seeds for what would happen later on. They were missed. They, they, Duane Sanchez not being on that team, the 2006 Mets, because he had gotten injured in a taxi accident in Miami, I believe, before the postseason, that was a huge blow. Without Duane Sanchez in that bullpen, that was a huge blow. And that could have been one of the reasons why the Mets didn't advance, because the bullpen, ya el bullpen estaba explotado. By the time they got there, they were on fumes. But anyway, I digress. Victor Zambrano got hurt. Um, Anderson Hernandez, remember him? Utility player. Jose Reyes. Yes, the spark plug, shortstop, all-star, tremendous player. I mean, he put up great numbers that season. I love Jose Reyes, and he was there. El Dominicano, Jose Reyes was tremendous. Underrated pickup of the season. Jose Valentin. Jose Tony Valentin was crucial for them. He had so many big hits that season. Played second base for the Mets. Did a great job. Ah, the old veteran, Pedro Martinez. Pedro Martinez was huge for the Mets. Um, he he battled through injuries, uh, but he was he was solid. Um, and then also on the Latino front for the coaches, you had Sandy Alomar Sr. was a bench coach. On that Mets team. So interesting, interesting. Ah, I can't forget. We also had El Venezolano, Jorge Julio, Jeremy Gonzalez, rest in peace, El Venezolano, Jose Lima, remember? Lima time. He was in and out of the you know rotation and out of the bullpen and stuff. And Andy Chavez, the guy who made the big catch in game seven of uh, game seven, the 2006 uh, NLCS. So the, the thing about this Mets team, when you think about how they dominated, because I, I remember as a fan watching, I, I missed very few games that season. I usually watch most of the games anyway, but I remember in particular this season, I mean, I during that season, I was locked in. When I tell you locked in, I was locked in. I mean, I remember that team absolutely mashed. Like, when I tell you they mashed, they mashed. When you talk about that lineup where you had David Wright, uh, you had Jose Reyes, you had uh, Paula Duca, you had Ramon Castro coming off the bench getting pitch hits and stuff. Jose Valentin, uh, earlier in the year until they traded him later, uh, Xavier Nady, um, Carlo Delgado. I mean, that team, you know, Cliff Floyd, that team was loaded. They had, I mean, into that point, as a Mets fan, we weren't used to really having offenses like that. Like, this was legitimately one of the very few Mets teams that was built on offense. Because if you remember, traditionally and historically, the New York Mets have been based on pitching. The Mets traditionally, historically, are a pitching-rich franchise, not necessarily rich in uh, developing position player talent. It's just never been the history of the Mets. So to say that the Mets finally had an offense that was formi formidable would be an understatement. This Mets offense was beyond formidable, and they basically romped everybody all throughout the season. They they had some moments later on in September that would struggle a little bit um, down the stretch, but then they found their footing and just rolled through the playoffs, uh, especially when they got into that, that series against the Dodgers. Um, they did damage. They did what they had to do, and they they hit. 
with the Latinos leading the way, with Jose Reyes leading the way, Carlos Delgado leading the way, uh, Carlos Beltran leading the way. These guys were the were the pillars who really led the way um, throughout. And so it was just so much fun to watch. And I remember that was that's why like the 2006 Mets stands out in my mind as a lost opportunity because I felt like this was probably one of the better Mets teams of my lifetime. And and I'll say this too, and maybe this is controversial, but or maybe not, depending on who you ask. That Mets 2016 was way better than the team from 2015 that actually made the World Series. That's why you never know the way baseball is going to go. Um, the postseason can be such a crapshoot, and you can get hot at any moment. You know, your offense could carry you. Your defense could carry you. Um, relief pitching, whatever it may be. You know, you, you get on a roll where you can get, you know, you ride the hot hand and you go on a roll, all of a sudden you make an unexpected deep run. So I think for me, as a Mets fan, this was about as much fun as I've ever had, um, especially to that point. So it, it was a beautiful time. I loved it. And I remember, I mean, the Mets were, and I remember also, like I said, the Latino element, you know, yo me identificaba mucho con ese equipo. You know, ellos tenían mucho boricua, mucho dominicano, venezolano, mexicano, cubano, tenía de todo, de todo, latino, de todo. And I loved it. You know, this was the first time where I really saw a Mets team have that many Latinos or any baseball team have that many Latinos. So to me, it was personal. It, it hit me the what I like to call Los Mets of 2006 really, um, you know, hit close to home. So. Another thing about 2006, getting to that game seven, because game seven, the NLCS was probably one of the most excruciating losses as a Mets fan I could remember. And there's been a lot of them. <laughs> Obviously, um, Mets fans know, you know, we, we, we're used to pain. We're used to disappointment. We're used to losing big games. We're, we're used to getting kicked in, in in the balls, right? So it happens. And, and so there have been plenty, you know, obviously 2015 World Series against Kansas City uh, on the very first play. I'll see this Escobar does that, you know, hits that ball. Your NSS but this boots it. I mean, that World Series got off to a bang. I mean, it was, it was from that, you know, stuff. We're used to stuff like that. So, um, but 2006 was such a, a, a killer because I remember. You know, obviously, Carlos Beltran had a big year that year. He was probably, I know David Wright had a great year, but I, I think Carlos Beltran, you could, it's safe to say he was their best player. Carlos Beltran was the Mets' best player that year. That's, that's I think that's, that's a given. Um, but the whole team was very good. Obviously, Willie Randolph did a great job managing, but um, just that team was just loaded. And so... For me, the thing with, with 2006, not only would it culminate with that being the apex of that particular Mets team, because the Mets would never get back as a as that team, right? As in that form or, you know, that addition of the Mets with that roster, they would never get back to that point again. Like that was the apex. That was it. It was so short, you know, because then in 2007, they would go on to collapse. In 2008, they collapsed again. So we didn't know at that time. We didn't know that. We didn't realize, yes, it hurt them losing uh, that game seven, the Andy Chavez catch. We thought, I swear to God, when Andy Chavez made that catch, I thought that the Mets were going to win that game. I, I, I swore I would have bet anything on it. I said, we got this. And it almost turned out to be a curse because it happened and everything went downhill from there. So, but I'll get to that in a second. But Really, in 2006 would be a culmination of, and we didn't know at that time, yes, as excruciating as that loss was, we didn't know that that was going to be the apex of that, of that core. That was it. They would never experience that again. Uh, Wright and Reyes would never, you know, Wright, Reyes, Beltran, Delgado would never experience a postseason together again. That was it. And that's very disappointing that that was it. Like, that was the only time. And so... That makes it even worse, even though despite it being a terrible loss, 
at that time. So getting back to that moment in time, 2006, right? Game seven. That particular moment, what I remember about that moment, moment meaning that whole game, about that whole game, I remember the Mets just, they were close. They had a couple of hits in the game. They didn't capitalize. They left guys on base. I remember Delgado had a few walks in that game. So Delgado got on base, and Beltran had a double in that game. So Beltran got a hit in game seven. So let me, because I want you to, to remember this. I want this to be known. Carlos Beltran had a hit in that game prior to the, the famous at-bat where obviously he strikes out looking right on the Wayne Wright curve. So, so much stuff happened that we didn't, we didn't know, you know, that we didn't know. We didn't know that the Mets would never get close again. We didn't know that Yadier Molina was going to turn into a potential Hall of Fame catcher. And we did not know that Adam Wainwright was going to have such a great career. We didn't know any of that at that time. You know, the Mets were just the far superior team in that instance. You know, the Cardinals had made the world, you know, they went to the World Series and eventually won, having won, I think, only 82 games or something like that. So they, they didn't, they were not a juggernaut. The Mets lost to an inferior team, period. I don't care what anybody says. The Mets were the way better team, and the Mets would have destroyed the, the, the Tigers that year, too. But, the, you know, they sometimes it's like that. That's how baseball is. You know, la pelota es así. It's just what it is. So, that game, para pa la gente, right? Because I want to shoot down this narrative that Carlos Beltran is responsible for the Mets losing or that he choked, okay? I want to read you guys the numbers. Of Carlos Beltran. Okay. Here it is. Matter of fact, let's read Delgado and Del and, and Beltran. Okay. Carlos Delgado against the Cardinals. This is Delgado, not Beltran. Hold on. I'll read Beltran in a minute. Now, Delgado, I think he got two or three walks in that game seven, if I'm not mistaken. But for that series, for the NLCS against the Cardinals, Carlos Delgado had three home runs. Nine RBIs and a 304 batting average. Okay. Three home runs, nine RBIs, 304 batting average. That was Carlos Delgado. Okay. The guy who they couldn't wait to 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 let fall off the ballot for the Hall of Fame. Because that's another thing. Maybe I'll talk about that in another episode about Carlos Delgado. But what they've done to him and the legacy of Delgado is, is a disgrace. Delgado to me should be in the Hall of Fame. I'm sorry. He, he, but anyway, Beltran should too, and he will be. But now, Carlos Beltran against the Cardinals. Listen to this in 06, in that same series that everybody talks about that Beltran choked, right? Beltran hit three home runs. He had three home runs, four RBI, a 296 batting average, and a 1.054 OPS. What the hell do you people want for him to do? Seriously. They basically, Beltran and Delgado basically carried them on their back, the Mets, in that series. Go look it up. I don't have time to read all the stats. Go look it up. Go read that box score. And to top it off, in that game, which the Mets lost 3-1, three 3-1 to one, three to one in that game, they lost. The only one who, who drove in a run in that game was David Wright. So David Wright drove in a run. Okay? He had the RBI in that on a on a single. An RBI, yeah, what was it? Yeah, an RBI single drove in a run. Okay? David Wright. They lost 3 to 1. The Mets only had four hits. Four hits in the entire game. Okay? And I'm going to read who gave the who had the four hits. Obviously I told you before Beltran had one hit. He had a double in that game prior. So, so Beltran had a double. Delgado was 0 for 1, but Delgado had three walks in the game. Okay? Wright was 1 for 4, had one hit in that game, drove in a run. Jose Valentin and Andy Chavez. So it's Valentin, Chavez, Wright, and Beltran were the four people who had hits. Okay, Paula Duca was 0 for 4. Reyes was 0 for 5. 
Oliver Perez was 0 for 2. Remember back then the pitcher used to hit. Uh, Sean Green was 0 for 3. Okay, Anderson Hernandez came in as a pinch runner. They didn't have any at-bats. And Michael Tucker came in as a pinch hitter 0 for 1. Okay, so what, what are we... Uh, Cliff Floyd came in as a pinch hitter 0 for 1. So let's not get crazy and try to rewrite history here. The Mets didn't hit in that game. So it was not all on Beltran. I'm sorry. Now, would you have liked to see him swing the bat? Sure. Absolutely. But he didn't. And and listen, and, and I remember I spent that whole night cursing out Yadiel Molina. I will go on to love him later on as he played for Team Puerto Rico, one of the greatest catchers I've ever seen. But in that moment, it took me a long time to, to come around <laughs> on Yadiel Molina. I got to be honest because I, that, that home run just scarred me. And, and you know, and, and like I said about the, the Andy Chavez catch, I thought that we were going to, when they made, when he made that play, I went nuts. Like I, I, Shea Stadium rocked, you know, which speaking of which, you know, in Shea Stadium that year, they averaged 41,723 uh, people per game. The attendance was 41,723. That's amazing. Like the Mets don't draw like that anymore. Not at all. Not even close. Now, I understand the world has changed, but man, that, that, the whole season, they averaged almost 42,000. That is impressive. That, that really is. So anyway, so that, that was it. And really, so just let it be known. Carlos Beltran was not the sole person to blame for the, the Mets essentially losing uh, you know, losing and collapsing in Game 7 of the NLCS 2006. But you know what? We're I will always remember the 2006 Mets, Los Mets, de 2006, de 2006. I will always remember them as one of the best summers I ever had watching baseball. It was a great playoff run. Uh, I was so proud to be a Mets fan. I loved seeing all those Latinos on one team. And that's a team I will always remember for the rest of my life. Um, it really, you know, I had so much fun, even though, look, you know, we should they have won it all? Yeah. And, and, and also just small notes here on, um, on the whole playoff thing that, that affected everything. Obviously, Aaron Heilman gave up the, coughed up those runs in the end for, for the Mets to lose uh, that game seven. And Duane Sanchez, who had a great year, um, the closer, El Dominicano, he had a great, great year. And once he got hurt in the taxi accident, that really took a toll on um, on the Mets, you know, and, and and it hurt the bullpen, you know, because Aaron Heilman is not a guy you want back there closing games. He's just not. And he proved that there. And another note as well, we did not get to see El Duque with the Mets um, as far as uh, on the Mets in the playoffs. So think about this, like, you think about it like this. The Mets had Pedro Martinez and they had El Duque on that roster, and neither one of them were available for that postseason run. So we didn't get to see Pedro Martinez. Now, I understand they were older. Pedro was older, but El Duque was really older. But he still was he, he, he was okay. He didn't do bad during the season, and I felt like if we would have had El Duque and Pedro, it would have helped, along with Duan and Sanchez. But... It is what it is. Injuries are part of baseball, but Los Mets, they're always going to live with me in, in my heart. 2006 was a great season. They didn't go all the way, but I had about as much fun as I've ever had watching baseball. So those people who criticize, those non-Latino fans who said our baseball team was too Latino, bite me. It's no, doesn't matter. The 2006 Mets were one of the greatest teams in franchise history. No, they didn't win a World Series. No, they didn't even get past the NLCS. But you know what? You won't forget them. And that's all I got. So definitely let me know what you think. What do you guys remember about the 2006 Mets? Uh, comment below. Let me know. Curious to hear your takes. And of course, make sure to give this video a like, a subscribe, a comment if you are watching, of course on YouTube and um, 
And away we go, man. I thank you guys very much for listening. That was episode number four. And of course, always live life as if you are in a three, two count. Until next time. <laughs>